Chapter 16 has to do with public relations writing, which is a subject matter that's near and dear to my heart as someone whose primary background comes in comes in writing. And why I think it's it's so important is it's so easy in this day and age to get caught up in the, the bells and whistles of communications, um, focusing on fancy websites and glossy brochures and um, style over substance. But at the end of the day, Within public relations, the most powerful thing we have going for us is our ability to communicate, whether that be orally or um, or in, in writing. That's what sets us apart from others within our agency is the ability to craft an articulate message that um, needs to be changed depending upon the audience, that needs to be changed depending upon the vehicle, whether it's for web, for print, or for the ear, and it's, I, I don't know, I guess I tend to probably take it too, too high of a level because I think it's almost a, uh, it's a poetic talent. Uh, within my job here at the university, within marketing and communications, I have some people who are just fantastic wordsmiths, people who are, who spend a lot of time, you know, crafting paragraphs and just pulling over each word and making sure it's the best one possible, as well as fantastic editors who can take a document and take a red pen or a chainsaw and just go to town on it, change it. And, and the result is just, it's something really, uh, really pretty cool. But I'm kind of a writing geek like that. So I'm sure I'm probably alone in, in that passion. But you should, however, um, be aware of some of the, the basics that come to public relations writing and some of the things you need to keep in, keep in mind. Um, the book talks about some of the fundamentals of, of writing, you know, just some of the basic things that are necessary for, for writing a good message. And I like to focus on readability. What is, what's your average audience able to uh, consume as far as, as far as reading something? And what are some of the tips and tricks of the trade to make sure that the message is as understandable as possible for the audience? Uh, most newspapers write for the idea is that the the person who's reading it has an eighth grade education. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when you are deciding which words to use and trying to avoid jargon and trying to avoid being complicated, um, keeping sentences short, um, and so forth. So be sure to pay attention to the, some of the tips and the uh, tips of the trade there. Um, the main writing vehicle used by public relations practitioners is, of course, the news release. And you're going to have a chance um, with this chapter to try your hand at writing your own press release based upon the case study at the end of this end of this book. Um, press releases have their own their own language to them, their own their own style. And um, as someone who's been writing press releases for, for years now and who's been involved in seeing other press releases, I can tell you that um, there's nothing worse than a really bad, really bad press release. And I have seen some really bad ones out there. And um, what a bad press release does for an organization is it means that the media is going to completely dismiss it because media is there rather finicky when it comes to, to press releases. There are some certain things that they look for Big one, of course, is looking for the fact that what is presented in the press release has to be newsworthy. And so pay attention to the parts in the book that talk about what makes something newsworthy. This will be one of the biggest challenges that PR practitioners face. And I will um, use my own institution for an example here at the university that probably on a daily basis, someone will come to me or my department and say, hey, we've got this great thing that we want to get the word out on. Can you do a press release on it? And what you find out is really what they want to talk about. Um, no one outside of themselves, perhaps, is really going to care about it. And so we're it's a it's a it's a difficult game to play because we want to um, obviously not offend the people that are coming to us, but also keep in mind that we have a very important working relationship with the local media. And if we start sending them press releases that don't contain actual news to them. They might start ignoring the other press releases that we sent them that do contain news. So it's a, it's a balancing act, and the PR practitioner has to walk a, uh, a fine line, a tightrope perhaps, and really work with people to say, okay, you know, what we're trying to get across here isn't exactly news, and maybe find some other type of communication vehicle to it. But you really want to keep those press releases for items that are actual news. And as far as 
what compromises news? Well, that's what you'll see in the in the chapter there. So um, be sure to pay attention to that. It also talks about the style of news releases, and this is this is important. the uh, the The style that news releases should follow is the Associated Press style, which is the style used by journalists. Now, why is this important? Well, um, um, editors and reporters are going to pay more attention to a press release that's written in AP style that's written in the style that they're used to it, um, there's just some credibility factor there. Another important part of this is that as more and more newsrooms uh, on the print side, newspapers look at reducing staff members, um, there's, there's a better chance of press releases, well-written press releases, well-written press releases that contain news, of actually being printed verbatim within the paper. What's going to make that even more likely is if it's already written in the newspaper style and the style that editors are that are accustomed to. So, um, right, press releases. This is a really probably one of the most important things to get out of this chapter as far as what to learn, how to do. So, and you'll get a chance, like I said, to, to practice that. Page three forty nine talks about some of the other print vehicles um, that are used within media kits, um, fact sheets, white papers. Um, variety of, uh, of tools at your disposal as a PR practitioner for ways to, to craft a message and get it to a, to a particular audience. Um, on page 350, they talk about writing for the ear, which is a lot different than um, writing, for the, writing for the eye. Um, I've worked with PR people who've come straight out of the broadcast industry, and they've had to do things like write headlines and write press releases, and it's really almost in some ways like learning a whole different language, that there's just a different way that you present things, that you write things that's intended for the ear to be read over the radio as opposed to being seen in print. So again, pay attention to that too. Finally, the chapter closes with the important subject of editing. And this is, you just cannot edit enough when it comes to print. I've been involved in um, overseeing you know print publications, some pretty large ones that have gone through numerous editing cycles and numerous sign-offs and fine checks until the end of the day. The publication's gone off to print. It's come back. Uh, people are excited. It's like Christmas time. You got a new you know, brochure or a catalog or um, some sort of publication, and you open it up, and the first thing you find is an error. Um, this isn't to dismiss editing because, I mean, really, no matter how many times you edit, it is possible to miss something, but the more you edit, the more carefully you edit, the more likely it is that what you send in will be close to perfect. And what helps more than anything is having someone edit beside yourself. Um, I, it's just it just um, opens up the possibilities more of identifying more errors. If you're the one writing the press release, have someone else take a look at it. Preferably someone who has knowledge of AP style and can do some of the, the fact checking. We have a real nice process within my department of running things through a pretty thorough review that is frustrating to the outsider who's trying to get things through quickly, but we take pride in that process because the end result is something as close to perfect as we can. So that's public relations writing. Um, enjoy doing the, the press releases assignment. Um, give you a good idea of how to, how to craft an effective press release together, and we'll see you in the next chapter. Thanks.